Hello, this is Mike Nemeth, Communications Director for the California Apartment Association. I'm here to welcome you to CAA's webinar, The City of San Jose's COVID-19 Eviction Moratorium and Rent Freeze. With the rash of COVID-19 related eviction moratoria and rent freezes that have been adopted throughout the state, it can be a challenge to keep everything straight. Today's webinar will cover the key ground rules in the City of San Jose that rental housing providers need to follow during the crisis. Here to discuss those rules, we have Anil Babar, CAA's Vice President for Public Affairs in San Jose, and Stephanie Shirky, Senior Policy and Compliance Counsel for the California Apartment Association. Now, before we get started, I have a legal disclaimer to share. CAA strives to provide accurate and timely information to assist its members. This seminar offers general information only and is not intended as legal advice. For legal advice on your specific property, please contact an experienced attorney. Information presented in this seminar is subject to change. Stay tuned and keep informed with CAA. Now I'd like to turn over the webinar to Stephanie. Thank you, Mike. In today's webinar, we will give a quick overview of the progression of COVID-19 related eviction protections and the rent freeze that applies in the city of San Jose. We will start by going through the timeline of events and then we will discuss the substantive provisions of the rent freeze and the eviction moratorium. And we will also briefly discuss the other related eviction measures owners in San Jose should be aware of. On that topic, we will specifically draw your attention to relevant county and state measures. So first, let's start with the timeline, and this can be helpful just to get a sense of the speed with which the response to COVID-19 has played out. So Anil, can you go over the various events that led to where we are today in San Jose? I understand it has been a busy couple of months. Yes, it certainly has. So fasten your seatbelt. We're going to go way back to February 10th when the County of Santa Clara announced the local public health emergency regarding COVID-19. Nearly a month later, the city of San Jose declared its own local emergency on COVID-19. Then the middle of March was very busy. On March 16th, the county of Santa Clara issued a shelter in place order that requires residents to shelter in their homes except for certain activities. On March 18th, the San Jose City Council passed an eviction moratorium through April 17th. We will discuss the details of that moratorium later in the webinar. Then on March 19th, the governor issued its own statewide order directing residents to stay home. After that, on March 24th, the County of Santa Clara passed an eviction moratorium that applies to both incorporated and unincorporated areas. So this means that the county eviction moratorium also applies to the city of San Jose. We will discuss the moratorium later in the webinar. Okay, so at this point in our timeline, it's important to know that state executives were under enormous pressure to take stronger actions to protect tenants from evictions. And in response to that pressure, two things happened. First, on March 27th, the governor issued an executive order providing additional protections for tenants related to evictions based on non-payment of rent. And that order actually expired on May 31st. Second, a little over a week later on April 6th, the Judicial Council adopted Emergency Rule 1 that suspended virtually all evictions in California. So Anil, can you tell us what happened next at the local level? Yes, just like state agencies experienced pressure to do more, local governments also experienced that pressure. On April 14th, the City Council extended its moratorium on evictions until May 31st. And then on April 28th, the city, San Jose City Council approved a freeze on rent increases that took effect immediately and lasts through December 31st, 2020. On May 19th, the City Council again extended the eviction moratorium, but this time through June 30th. And on the same day, the City Council revised the eviction moratorium to impose anti-retaliation protections, a prohibition on late fees, and require repayment of unpaid rent within 12 months of the after the moratorium and then most recently on june 2nd the santa clara county board of supervisors made additional changes to their moratorium which we will cover more in detail later yeah so to sum it up it has been quite the journey these last couple of months we are now going to get into the specifics of the rent freeze and eviction moratorium to help you understand the rules that apply so let's start with the rent freeze since this topic is a little bit less complicated than the eviction moratorium. The rent freeze was enacted on April 28th and I like to describe it as having two parts. 
The first part places limits on owners, and the second part tries, tries to help the owners who are subject to the freeze. So let's uh, cover the first part. Uh, the first thing to know here is that the freeze applies to properties that are subject to the city's rent control law. So it doesn't apply to single family homes or condos, duplexes, or to units built after September 1979. But remember that those exempt units are still subject to the state's anti-price gouging law, that applies during states of emergency, and many are also likely subject to statewide rent caps under AB 1482. Members can get more information on both of those laws through our website. Uh, the next thing to note is that for properties subject to this rent freeze ordinance, landlords cannot increase rent from April 28th through the end of 2020. If the landlord provided a notice of a rent increase, but that rent increase had not yet taken effect, then the rent increase can't take effect until 2021. And landlords who are subject to this freeze can petition for a rent increase using the city's existing petition process. The landlord basically needs to show that the increase is necessary for the landlord to obtain a fair return on their investment. And the link you see on the screen here will take you to the city's petition package for landlords to use. Now, as for the second part of the rent freeze, the city of San Jose did offer some assistance to owners who are subject to the freeze. And Noel, can you go over that assistance? Yes, our members are working hard to provide safe environments for tenants to shelter in place, and many are doing what they can to help their tenants who may have difficulty paying rent. But some aspects of the city's rent control ordinance presented a few barriers in providing that assistance. For example, many of our members have shown interest in temporarily reducing the rent to help their tenants get through this challenging time. However, under the city's rent control ordinance, such a temporary reduction would affect the base rent for purposes of, incre of increases in the long term. In order to remove that barrier and encourage landlords to offer those rent reductions, the city's rent freeze ordinance allows owners who are subject to the city's rent control ordinance to enter in an agreement with the tenant for temporary reductions in rent. The rent automatically returns to the original amount either when the freeze expires or when the, the agreement expires, whichever occurs first. Another aspect of the city's rent control ordinance that has created some issues for landlords during the pandemic is the ability for a tenant to petition for a rent decrease because of service reductions. This has been an issue because shelter in place orders that the state and the county have adopted impose social distancing requirements, particularly in common spaces. As a result, rental housing providers have needed to close common recreational areas like pools and gyms. In order to avoid punishing landlords for complying with those orders, the rent freeze ordinances make clear that claims for rent decreases based on those closures will be denied. And then uh, what about fees? I understand that the rent freeze ordinance provides some relief with respect to fees that owners generally need to pay. Yeah, that's correct. Owners have to comply with the city's rent control ordinance need to pay a registration fee, also known as the ARO registration fee. Under the rent freeze ordinance, if an owner doesn't pay that fee on time, the penalty will be waived through the 2021 fiscal year. Additionally, the amount of those ARO fees have been reduced by approximately 35% for the 2020-21 fiscal year. And finally, all permit fees related to the repairs or maintenance to the buildings subject to the freeze are waived regardless of building size. All right, so now let's move on to discuss the eviction moratorium. Uh, so unlike the moratorium on rent increases, the eviction moratorium applies to all residential rental properties in San Jose, including single family homes, rooms rented in a single family home, duplexes, condos, affordable housing, units that are covered under San Jose's just cause law, as well as the statewide just cause law under AB 1482. And that moratorium remains in effect through June 30th, unless the city extends it further. I would remind listeners that the city has already extended this moratorium twice, so it's important to check for additional extensions. So Anil, can you explain what this eviction moratorium means for owners and for tenants? Yeah, so basically in San Jose, this moratorium means that a landlord cannot evict a tenant for non-payment of rent if the tenant is unable to pay rent as a result of COVID-19. The tenant has notified their landlord of their status as an affected tenant. We'll get into that more later. Okay, so there are some limits on non-payment evictions, but what about other evictions that aren't based on non-payment of rent? 
Well, this moratorium also limits the ability of landlords to determine a tenancy without just cause. Now in San Jose, a just cause ordinance has been in place since 2017, but that ordinance does not apply to all rental property in the city. However, this moratorium basically extends those just cause requirements to all residential properties for a limited period of time. So a tenant in a unit that is otherwise exempt from the city's just cause requirements cannot be required to move out without a specific cause until after the moratorium expires. Okay, so over the next few slides, we will discuss those two separate moratoria in more detail. First, we will cover the moratorium on non-payment evictions. Under the city's moratorium, when a landlord serves a tenant with a notice to pay rent or quit, the notice must include a statement that it is being served in good faith. In addition, the landlord must also include two documents with the notice. They need to provide a city prepared copy of tenant resources, which is the purple document shown on the left hand side of this uh, slide in front of you. And they must provide a city prepared notice that provides information regarding the moratorium. This second document is the orange document shown on the right here and is actually a two page document. And you can find both of those documents through the websites that appear on this slide. And another thing to remember is that the landlord must submit a copy of the three-day notice to pay rent or quit to the housing department in San Jose within three days of service to the tenant. This can be done either through U.S. mail or online. Okay, so now in order to qualify for the protections of the San Jose ordinance, the tenant needs to notify their landlord that they are an affected tenant and they need to do so within seven days of the landlord serving a termination notice, such as a notice to pay rent or quit. So Anil, can you tell us how the city ordinance defines the term affected tenant? Yeah, so under the ordinance, an affected tenant is a tenant who, as a result of COVID-19, suffered a substantial loss of income through their unemployment as a result of any of the following, a job loss, reduced compensated hours of work, closure of their employer's business, missing work due to the closure of their minor child's school, loss of income due to being infected with COVID-19, or caring for a person infected with COVID-19, or other similarly caused reasons. And also remember that the city's ordinance does not require the tenant to notify the landlord of their affected tenant status in writing. In other words, the notification can be oral. Tenants are generally encouraged to provide this notification in writing, since they may need to prove that they did so later. And the city offers a link to a county form that the tenant can use if they would like. But again, they are not required to use this form to notify the landlord. A snapshot of that form is on your screen and is available on the city's website. And if you do end up proceeding with an unlawful detainer action based on non-payment of rent, under the city's moratorium, the tenant can defend himself or herself from eviction by demonstrating two things. First, they must prove that they notified the landlord of their affected tenant status under the ordinance. And second, the tenant must provide documentation of that status. Examples of that documentation include a letter from their employer citing COVID-19 as a reason for reduced hours of work or termination, paycheck stubs from before and after the outbreak, and bank statements showing their financial situation before and after the outbreak. In fact, if the tenant used the county form that we linked earlier, the form instructs the tenant to check a box as to which documentation they intend to provide and whether that documentation is attached. Remember that the tenant does not need to provide this documentation until they are defending themselves in an unlawful detainer action. While we are on the topic of documentation, the city of San Jose also offers a blank affidavit of substantial income loss that the tenants can use if they are unable to provide other objectively verifiable evidence of their job or income loss. A snapshot of that form appears on this slide and is available on the website shown here. All right, so now we are going to turn to the other part of the eviction moratorium. As we mentioned earlier, San Jose's ordinance doesn't just limit evictions based on non-payment of rent. It also prohibits no-cause evictions of tenants who are affected tenants, meaning those tenants who suffered a substantial loss of income as a result of COVID-19. 
And that protection applies to all rental property types, including single family homes, condos, and homes that are built recently. This essentially means that tenants in all rental properties in San Jose are protected by the city's Just Cause Ordinance, also known as the Tenant Protection Ordinance, or TPO, through at least June 30th. For most, or for instance, most single family homes are exempt from just cause requirements and can generally terminate a tenancy with a 30 or 60 day notice. However, if the tenant is an affected tenant, that termination would be prohibited. Instead, the landlord will need to identify a specific cause to terminate the tenancy. To better understand those causes, you can refer to the city's website, or if you are a member of CAA, you can refer to our paper on the topic, a snapshot of which appears on this screen. And you also want to remember that if a landlord is evicting a tenant for a just cause, when the landlord serves the termination notice to the tenant, they need to include a city prepared copy of tenant resources, which is a purple document shown on the slide. And within three days of serving the tenant with the notice, they need to provide a copy of that notice to the city's housing department, either by mail or online through the website shown on the slide. So uh, what about the rent that goes unpaid by tenants protected by the moratorium? I hear many cities and counties have addressed this issue, both in terms of whether late fees can be charged and when the rent needs to be paid back. So Anil, what has the city of San Jose done? Well, this is an area that has developed in the city of San Jose over time. Originally, the city's moratorium did not address this issue, but on May 19th, the council adopted an ordinance that prohibits landlords from charging late fees, penalties, or interest on the rent that goes unpaid under the moratorium. The city council also specified that the unpaid rent needs to be paid within 12 months after the moratorium expires. Specifically, tenants will need to pay half of the rent past due within six months after the moratorium expires and the remaining half within the next six months. So, for example, if the city's moratorium expires on June 30th, then tenants who are protected by the moratorium will have until December 31st of 2020 to pay 50% of the rent they didn't pay under the moratorium. And they will need to pay the remaining 50% by June 30th of 2021. And uh, the city's ordinance does allow a landlord and tenant to enter into a voluntary repayment agreement that provides a different repayment schedule. That agreement needs to comply with other applicable laws. And also before entering into that agreement, the landlord needs to give the tenant a city prepared notice that discloses the tenant's rights under the ordinance. A snapshot of that notice appears on the right hand side of this slide. When the city added the repayment provisions to its eviction moratorium, it also added retaliation protections for tenants. Under those protections, a landlord cannot coerce a tenant to leave and cannot retaliate against a tenant for exercising or asserting rights under the city's moratorium. So that takes us to the end of our coverage of the city's eviction and rent increase moratoria. For more information on those ordinances, we do have a paper available on our website. A snapshot of that paper is pictured here. Uh, this paper is currently available for free to both members and non-members. Anil, are there any other resources you would recommend? Yes, the city of San Jose also has a website devoted to the city's response to COVID-19. And that website includes a page for the eviction moratorium and another page on the rent freeze. Both pages contain city provided webinars and FAQs on each of the topics. Now that we have covered the city's eviction moratorium, we also wanted to briefly go over some additional measures that impact evictions due to COVID-19. If you recall the timeline that we started with, you may remember that a few other entities have also been involved in creating eviction protections for tenants during the crisis. Currently, the relevant entities for purposes of the City of San Jose are the County of Santa Clara and the Judicial Council. We'll go over the measures from each of these entities over the next few slides. Yes, so first we'll start with the County of Santa Clara. On March 24th, 2020, the county enacted a moratorium on evictions for non-payment of rent for tenants who are unable to pay because of COVID-19. The county ordinance also prohibits no fault evictions if the tenant has suffered financial difficulty due to COVID-19. Those no fault evictions are defined in the statewide just cause or just cause law that took effect in January of this year. 
And those causes typically include evic evictions in order to sell the property or in order to allow the owner or certain family members to move into the property. So Anil, maybe you can start by telling us which properties are subject to this county ordinance and how long it applies. Sure. So this ordinance applies to all residential rental property, including apartments, single family homes, duplexes, mobile homes, and tenants who rent rooms in private homes. And it currently applies until July 28th, but could be extended. All right, so my next question for you relates to where this ordinance applies. As I understand it, county ordinances typically only apply in unincorporated areas of the county. So they usually don't apply to cities within the county like the city of San Jose. So is that the case with this county ordinance? No, this one is unique. This ordinance expressly states that it applies to all cities and unincorporated areas of Santa Clara County. But the really important thing to note here that if a city has enacted their own eviction moratorium, if the city ordinance is more is a more protective ordinance, it prevails over the county ordinance. We do recommend that landlords consult with an experienced landlord tenant attorney to, ter to determine which provisions apply to their property. And another important thing to note is that under the county ordinance, all notices to terminate a tenancy during the pandemic must provide the tenant with two things. First, it has to include a county prepared form that identifies the reason for the termination and includes a notice of the tenant's rights. And the link to that a form appears on this slide. And second, the termination notice must also provide notice of emergency rental assistance programs. And those programs are listed on the second link provided on this slide. So under the City of San Jose's eviction moratorium, tenants are required to notify their landlord of their need for this relief within a certain period of time. Does the county ordinance impose a similar requirement? No, this is one area where the two ordinances diverge. Tenants are encouraged to complete the, the same county form we mentioned earlier, which is shown on this slide, and are provided to a landlord as soon as possible to notify them of their financial difficulties or inability to pay. However, unlike San Jose's ordinance, there is no deadline for the tenants to notify their landlord of their inability to pay or financial difficulties. And what about the landlord's ability to collect the rent that goes unpaid under the county ordinance or ability to charge late fees? Well, on this topic, the county ordinance is similar to the city of San Jose's ordinance. The landlord cannot charge late fees, and the tenant gets 12 months after the moratorium expires to pay the past due rent, with half being due at the six month mark. For more information on the county's moratorium, we do have a paper available on our website. The paper is currently available for free to members and non-members. And the county has also posted a document containing frequently asked questions regarding the moratorium. The website for that document appears on this slide. So if I'm not mistaken, I think we're on the last measure we're going to cover in this webinar, and this one also comes from the state, correct? Yes, so the last measure that we wanted to mention is a rule adopted by the Judicial Council, which is a state agency. Uh, the Judicial Council is really basically the entity that oversees the court system throughout the state. On April 6th, the Judicial Council adopted Emergency Rule 1, and that rule prohibits the issuance of a summons in an eviction case unless there is a health and safety reason. Also, the rule suspends the entry of defaults in eviction cases and court trials unless there's a health and safety reason present. Essentially, these rules put all unlawful detainer actions on hold until 90 days after the conclusion of California's COVID-19 state of emergency. And so it's really uncertain how long that rule be, will be in place. Uh, in fact, just a few days ago, uh, the Judicial Council is, has issued um, a possible revision that would actually uh, make this rule uh, come to an end in early August, um, but we are still waiting to see whether or not they proceed with that change. So it's a good idea to, uh, to stay in tune and in touch with what's going on. Um, and so there comes some uncertainty with that Judicial Council rule, and that word uncertain is really a good adjective for the time that we find our, ourselves in today. As we explained at the beginning of this webinar, things are changing very rapidly. 
And here at CAA, Anil and I and our entire staff are working around the clock to keep our members and the general public informed regarding the pandemic. We have a resource page dedicated to navigating the outbreak, including links to the eviction moratoria for cities and counties throughout California, videos to help keep you informed, tenant plan payment plan agreements, and much, much more. And this website is being updated daily, and you're encouraged to bookmark that page and visit it for answers to many of your questions related to this crisis. And all of that information is available for free even if you are not a member of CAA, although we do encourage you to become a member if you are a rental housing provider so that we can continue to, continue, so that we can continue to provide this information and webinars like this. With that, I'd like to thank Anil for joining me today and also thank those who are tuning in. We hope you stay well and informed. Hi everyone, it's Stephanie and it's now the end of June and we do have one update for you. On June 23rd, the San Jose City Council extended their eviction moratorium to apply through August 31st instead of June 30th. And so this does affect the repayment period that we discussed earlier in the webinar. So if this moratorium indeed expires on August 31st, then tenants who were protected by it will have until February 28th of 2021 to pay 50% of the rent that they didn't pay under the moratorium. And then the remaining 50% would need to be paid by August 31st of 2021. Um, but also remember that the city could further extend this moratorium and uh, the county could do the same. So it's really important as evidenced here with this update um, that you need to continually try to stay up to date on these changes. Thank you so much. We hope you stay well.